I'm Michael Freudenberg, this is Film Masters, and we are working on part 17. Uh, we're going to uh, put the soundboards on, we're going to put our guitar necks on, we're going to get it all ready to go so we can start putting the electronics into it. So what we're going to be doing is getting straight into it, and we'll start doing it now. So as you can see, obviously, this is what we had from the previous tutorial, all ready to go. We've got our soundboard that we've already created. And what we need to do now is to make uh, the cut or the incision to make sure that our hurdy-gurdy wheel lines up with our soundboard. So I've put it on, I've lined it up. I'm going to use a pencil and I'm just going to uh, scribe a line against the hurdy-gurdy wheel in order to make a mark and I'll lift this up so that you can see it. There it is there. And we're going to take a measurement now. The measurement that we're going to take is from the front and we'll transcribe that line onto the actual board itself. And then we'll do one from the back, from the back of the actual uh, sound board box where the frame is and get that measurement. Now, my measurements are going to be different to yours. So I'm showing you how to get those measurements off your apprehension engine box. But once you've done that, obviously, I'm just going to go and use my black texture in order to outline where I need to remove that material. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a chisel. Uh, you can use uh, a, uh, a drill and then use a jigsaw if you want to. Now make sure you use some thick material if you are using uh, a chisel underneath it in order to protect your workbench. Um, and obviously I'm going to be using two different types of chisels. One's a long one and one's a thin one. The thinner one is for uh, the space in between, whereas the long fat one I'll be using for the lengthways. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm using the small chisel. And obviously I have sped up this video because there's nothing worse than watching somebody chisel out a same part over and over again. Anyway, so what I'm doing here is I'm just going along the line, hitting it through as you can see. And I am doing it from the inside. So obviously you can flip it over and have a look and you'll have to go over it. Uh, in my instance, I had to do it twice over the same area for it to cut through the material properly. Um, and that is okay to do that. So just take your time. Again, I've just sped this video up because you've got limited time, um, as do I. So here's a close up. Um, as you can see, it's pushing through the material and uh, the material will uh, come out when you flip it over, there's a line I'm talking about before. Um, it's coming through the other side, which is good. So just take your time and uh, chisel around it. But if you've got a jigsaw, obviously you can put a hole in it and uh, use a jigsaw to cut straight through. Just take your time no matter what you're actually doing. Because the last thing you want to do is stuff this up and then have to cut another piece and then another one and another one until you get it done correct. And there's my part. It's nice and straight. I'm happy with it. So let's do a test run now. I'm just going to put it on and it fits nicely. I'm happy with it. It's going to make sure that I go around the sides. You probably need to do the same as well. Make sure everything fits there. If it's too tight, when you turn the crank around and you hear a squealing sound or a part of it is rubbing, that's okay. You can just simply take that board off and use a bit of sandpaper and just gently sand it back until you can get it back a little bit. Now I've got two different lots of screws here. One of them, as you can see, is um, it's a small one. It is a button head screw. It's a timber screw, obviously, and the size is at 6G by 15 millimeters. Uh, there's 100, so there's probably way too many than I need. The other one is a 10G. It's 50 millimeters in length. Uh, the uh, 10G is the width of the actual uh, screw, and as you can see, we need something that goes all the way through. Now. I want to show you something. You don't have to do this. I'm going to do it to mine. I am going to be taking my thick guitar neck and I'm going to turn it into something that looks more like a guitar neck by simply cutting out some of it. I've drawn a line on the inside of what I want to do because you don't need to keep it all that thickness the whole way through on that uh, actual guitar neck itself. So I'm using a jigsaw. I'm not going to show you how to do this. This is something you can creatively do yourself if that's what you want to do. If not, you can leave the larger guitar neck the way it is, uh, nice and square. I did for my very first one and it worked perfectly. Um, however, 
I just want to make it look like a guitar neck. So I'm using my sander, I'm thinning it down a little bit, and I'm simply smoothing it off. So, and there it is there. So it looks more like a guitar neck now. I'm happier with it. You can do the same thing if you want to. So if you want to do that, go for it. So we're going to get into the measurements now. So I'm going to measure my large guitar neck first of all off the hurdy-gurdy wheel. So we need to measure from the center of the hurdy-gurdy wheel to the front of the box to get the measurement. It could be different compared for mine to your apprehension engine box, which is fine. So find that center and then mark it on the other side. And the reason we're doing that is so that way our large guitar neck is going to sit right center on the other side of the box. We don't want it to be off anywhere because then it'll look wrong. It won't look right. So we're going to move straight into it. I'm going to mark it off. I'm going to make sure that I'm um, obviously have marked um, where the actual, uh, those two supporting brackets are underneath our guitar neck. And we're going to put two screws on each one of those. So it's going to be a total of four four of those large screws in there. But before we do, down the bottom, you can see where we've already created that extra piece of material on the left-hand side. That is actually for the bottom of the guitar necks. So yes, I did put some forward planning into the building of this. Now it's around three inches in depth. So I'm gonna use a ruler, make sure you measure yours as well. And I'm gonna mark it off. Now there's gonna be four screws on this as well. So one on each side. Now one thing you'll probably notice is a little strip down the middle. Yours probably doesn't have it. I actually put there on that, I just wanted to make it look different. I put a little bit of mahogany on there. So you can do the same if you want. If not, that's fine, it's your box. Make it the way you want to. And then we have it. We've got the four, four screws. Uh, it's gonna be in there. It's uh, The measurement is simply based off the fact that whatever looked good on the, on the board, and as long as it fits in some material, so it's entirely up to you again. So I'm gonna make the measurement now. I've measured halfway and making sure that it is sitting straight. And you can see I'm using a clip when I'm using that guitar neck and putting it in place. And I'm going to draw a line so I can know as a reference where it needs to go the next time I put it back down like I'm doing right now. And that's going to speed up the fact that when I put the guitar on, if it moves around a little bit, I know if it's out or not. So I'm going to use a clamp. It's clamped on. So next thing I'm going to do, to do is measure for the small guitar neck. So I'm going to measure the length from one side to the far end, draw a line. We'll just simply draw a line at the end of the hurdy-gurdy wheel and then measure between the hurdy-gurdy wheel and the first part of the frame. It's gonna be around two and a half inches if you measured your measurement correctly based on your apprehension engine or my apprehension engine plans. So around two and a half inches, it should be the measurement. Um, but measure it anyway. Make sure your measurement is correct based on your box. Mine gonna be two and a half inches. I'm gonna put that mark there. It's gonna find out or give me the opportunity to uh, put my small guitar neck on there and figure out the alignment, make sure it is correct, if that makes sense. And there it is. I'm simply gonna put my two marks there. We're gonna put two screws on the top and two screws on the support that goes on the side of the box. So what I need to do, obviously I'm gonna take them off. I'm going to uh, transcribe what I already put on the large guitar neck on the small one on this little gap here that's in the box itself. Now, that is just a pure accident. I didn't plan that part. However, it is really good if you chiseled it because it fits there nicely. I can use a rule now and just mark off where the actual holes need to be to line up because I want it all to be perfect against the large guitar neck and the small one. And as you can see, there it is. We've got two lined up and we got four on the other side. Now, I'm going to drill these pre-drill it. I'm not going to show you because you know how to drill by now following these other tutorials. So I've now done them at the top and on the support. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Obviously that's the support and the guitar necks. So we're going to screw on our soundboard now. Now we've done this in the past to, just to make sure that it fit. However, we're going to put it back on again. I'm going to screw it in. Now I only want to put a screw on each corner and one in between where the reverb tank is going to go. So we've got one on the right, one on the left at the very front, one on the right and one on the left on the back of the actual soundboard. And then right in the middle at the very back where the reverb tank is going to go 
is where you need to put that other screw. So I'm gonna speed up this video because obviously you don't wanna see me screw things in real time on the apprehension engine. However, maybe you do and that's okay. However, in this video, we're gonna speed it up. So now that we've got our soundboard on there in place, just sitting there, obviously screwed in with just a few screws, I'm gonna line up my guitar necks. Now using that line that we put on the far left hand side, and uh, I'm obviously going to uh, screw in my very first screw, which will lock in that first part of my small guitar neck. Now I'm gonna use a square as well, just to make sure it's nice and square before I drill my second hole in at the very top using the drill holes that we already drilled in at the guitar necks. And we're gonna do exactly the same with the large guitar neck as well. So again, two screws on each side of the large guitar neck with only two screws at the very top on the small guitar neck, which you can see. So I'm gonna speed it up, obviously. I'm gonna put one in just to start it off, making sure it's nice and up against uh, the side, nice and flush. I'm using my square, obviously, to make sure that the guitar neck is square and is correct. And once it is, I'm gonna go through and drill the holes and keep on screwing. And obviously, the best thing is if you're putting your guitar neck in, put your first screw in, and that allows you to give a little bit of lean weight if you need to make an adjustment, especially if your box isn't nice and straight. Uh, maybe you put a measurement out just as an example. So once you've done that, now you can see at the very top of the actual guitar necks, I haven't screwed them all the way in, and I'm going to uh, now drill the through the holes that we've already counter drilled in the supports for both of them. So uh, obviously the guitar neck, the large, and the small guitar neck. And then once we've done that, um, we were going to start to screw in all those uh, screws that we need. So it's gonna be uh, six on the side, and obviously we've already got the six up the top. So you can obviously hand screw them in. However, I'm going to speed up the process with a uh, screwdriver that's attached to a drill and uh, speed up the workflow. Um, and obviously uh, just simply speeding up the video also makes it quicker as well. But you can see what I'm actually doing here. So the reason obviously I'm talking quickly and the reason why the edit's quick in this video is because it's a long video and the fact that we wanna get that box done in this video, ready to go to the next one. So we're gonna make a measurement now, make a measurement on the top of your box using the same thickness plywood that we use for the soundboard. You can use a little bit thicker, but we've already discussed this one, that's fine. And once you've done that, line it up and we're gonna put some screws in there using those same little screws that we used with our soundboard. So we're gonna start off on the corner. I'm not gonna show you the measurements. Make up the measurements yourself. Um, look at your wooden frame on the box and make a decision where you'd like to put them. Now you can get an idea where I'm putting mine. So I'll start on each corner first, just so that the material doesn't move around. I'm going to then make a mark right in the middle and screw that in. And then I'm gonna uh, find out the center between those screws and put a mark there. And then obviously I'm going to put screws in that one as well. So if you see, I'm gonna have five in the front, which will lock it in, do not glue it in because you want to be able to take this part off because you may be uh, applying different sound devices to it. This is gonna be somewhere where you'll be screwing in different sound makers and so forth. Um, have a look at Mark Corvin's apprehension engine. He's actually got some screws and stuff that's glued up in a box underneath it and he uses a magnet to slide around to make all this rumbling sounds and stuff. He also has like some sound makers on top. But we're gonna put those five screws on each side, as you can see in the video. Obviously use a sander, I'm not gonna show you, but you're gonna use a sander to go around and make sure everything is nice and smooth. And now we're going to come to the last part, which is the back of the box. Now, funny enough, I have some stuff that was scrapped from the hardware. Obviously they use those packing for planters and it still has the markings on it, so I was quick to grab it because, hey, I wanna have all this old stuff or different printing on there, just make it unique. And obviously I'm going to screw on each corner 
and only put four in there for the time being. I'm going to sand it. I'm not going to show you, but I will sand it um, because we're going to take that off and that's where we're going to be plugging in our three-quarter sockets and stuff for our sound makers. Now, you need some feet as well for your apprehension engine. I'm using rubber ones. You can get them from the hardware, get them really cheap. They're like a dollar, dollar fifty, depending on the size of it. Choose whatever size. Now, if you don't want to use rubber, I'm using rubber because I'm trying to stop the vibrations from anywhere except at the box. However, if you want to, you can make up wooden um, legs for it. Little ones, if you want, that's fine. I don't think Mark Corvin's actually um, got legs on his ones. I think they just sit straight onto an actual stand. But I'm doing it this way. It's totally up to you. If you want to put legs on them, I'm doing it. And there we have it. There's our apprehension engine box. It's finally done. It's taken us 18 different uh, video tutorials to get to this stage, but it's now done. Now we're gonna move on to the electronics. So let's do that in the next tutorial. So there's a guitar neck, two of them. Don't they look good? Our box is done. It's got a hurdy-gurdy wheel in it. We can crank it. Now, if you want to become a film master, so it's pretty simple. You can subscribe to the channel. You can like me on Facebook and or on Twitter. Till next time, don't just film it, master it. Thank mm -hmm. you.